Is Jalen Suggs a hooper? Check the film. The guy can score on all three levels. Athletic, fast, no one could really stop him. To be honest, football is my first love for real. He could have played either sport. His arm and his speed is out this world. Everybody thought he was going to choose football. Here we go. I couldn't imagine having to choose between two things I love. I wanted to put Minnesota on the map. Look what he's doing right now. You know what I mean? He's going crazy in the NBA. The Orlando Magic select Jalen Suggs. Yo, Jalen Suggs! What's up, bro? Yeah, come on real quick. Walk with me, walk with me. <laughs> right, what's up? Yes, sir. I know he's good. How you been? Good, you sure? Good, yeah, you too? Good. Yeah, it's good. Whole family's down there in Orlando. That's what's up. So you moved him out there? Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Uh, hey, I know it's a dream gig. I know, I know. hell yeah. Right when my old elementary school is right now, spot where I used to come all the time after school, come play on the park, come hoop at these two hoops right here, play wall ball, you know, whatever it was. I got my dad working a kid out right now. You know, something that he's always doing, helping kids get better, you know, exactly what he did with me. So let's take over the basket, bam, take off. That one. I know it makes him happy, it makes me happy. If we can all eat, then why not, you know, share the wealth, kind of just what we're all about. You can't talk about Minnesota basketball without saying Suggs. Literally put Minnesota on the map when it comes to basketball, period. Talk about New York, talk about Cali, talk about Texas, but I mean, we just put out two top five draft picks in the last two years. Just a rich history of basketball. Cole Aldridge, Trey and Tyus Jones, Gary Trent, and it was me and then Chet. When you play video games, you normally make a Chet Holmgren. You make somebody that's seven foot one, handles, shoots the ball, high high Q, dunking on everybody. My dad saw the potential in him and stuck with him, and I mean, look where he's at now. Chet looked me in the eye and he said, no, I, I really want to be a good basketball player. Jalen Suggs, he can do pretty much anything you want him to do. You rocking and rolling on the main side, and you know, you go get Paige Beckers. Like, I feel like we're all generational players, so to grow up in the same spot during the same time, it's really crazy. What Paige has done for women's basketball is incredible. She was able to take that Minnesota basketball and take it to the next level. And now she's one of the most recognizable young ladies across the country. Just one of the coldest hoopers I've ever seen. And Jalen was super good at a young age. Chet was on that team. Them having the great chemistry that they've had, and they've grown it since like elementary school. And just being around them and continuing to watch them was really great for my game as well. All of us together kind of at one time and being able to go support each other. We went to her game, she came to ours. So I'm hoping that me, Jalen, Chet, put Minnesota on the map for basketball. You know, it's crazy that the same little AU program, the same Minnesota, you know, where we started practicing in third grade together. In back-to-back -back drafts, we put back-to-back -to -back top five picks. I think he was like in the seventh or eighth grade, like he was starting to get the national recognition and mine sort of came later. But once we both got it, it was both a topic that we talked about and just how crazy people will love you just because you play the game of basketball. I think the best part was the YouTube when that came about. Social media, hoop mixtape, and YouTube highlights. And then as I kind of got there, overtime kind of took over, and they were always at the game, whether it was dudes with cameras, whether it was dudes on their phones. But I think it was really crazy how fast it happened. The clips were always being filmed. Like all I see are high school highlights, high school posts. And they were always getting instantly sent out. I was so shocked because he was only in high school. I remember fiending for the blue check to get verified. Blue check. Blue check. Blue check. From then on, you just kind of blow and explode. I seen players like LeBron, like KD, Kyrie, like all those people have a blue check. My brother has one. We both were just like, dang, like there's a K next to our name. Each 10K was crazy. Like getting the 20K was OD. Getting the 50 was like, dang, like I'm popping now. 100,000 people follow us, 300,000 people follow us. And I remember the first time I had to turn off my Instagram notifications just because I was getting too much. So now he has his blue check. 
What does it mean? I don't even know if a lot of us even know what it means, but you got a blue check. So when he got his blue check, he still had to take the garbage out. <laughs> he still had to get good grades. You still got to grind. You still have to work. Because you don't make it until you're in the NBA. We moved in here fifth grade, sixth grade. I've been here since I left for school. Back at the crib, we've sat here before. Still got my TV and all that. Still got my iconic printer. Yeah, my first room was the office. Really only had room for the bed. But yeah, this is where I was at. You know, that's not in here anymore, but was the first hoop. You know, I got my first bucket on, with my little tight suit. Started me on this journey, on this path to where I am now, chasing the dreams that I had when I was a little kid playing on these hoops where I can take care of my family, come back and show love and, you know, be an inspiration for people, you know, don't come from much or, you know, just come from Minnesota. This is where I used to beat the brakes off of you one-on-one. -on -one. Beat anything. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The hoop that's in the driveway has been there since I was born. It's going to hell and back for real. Sometimes we had a rule on there, no dunking and hanging. I mean, I only paid like $125 for the hoop, and we've had it for over 20 plus years. A lot of my early memories are definitely tied in with basketball. One of my favorite things to do is tell people to stand right in front of the hoop so I could check some, and I'd back up, run full speed, and try to go dunk on them. <laughs> but he set everybody up, just dunk on people. Like I, you know, I caught the Rosen. So when he went up for the DeRozan dunk, I knew he was going to take off because we I've taught him how to jump. <laughs> On my way to the gym, I was to get a quick workout in. I spent countless hours there this summer improving my game. I was become like my second home. Year one was definitely a learning experience. I learned so much about my body, about how to perform at a high level. You know, all that I'm taking into account. And the work I'm putting in this summer helped me get ready for year two. I work out at least five days a week, but I always get a bunch of reps up, a bunch of shots. Some days we we'll do more ball handling, some days we we'll do more finishing. Some days it'll be more of a conditioning day. I've probably been in as many workouts as I have been days of school, even more probably. So you basically bulldog them backed up and hit him with the bull. Dog. Yeah. Larry's my pops, my road dog, my best friend. Went to college at Valley City, had a couple opportunities to go to the league, but you know, he ended up having me and he poured all his love and skill into me. Good, 15 feet, nice. Well, Larry had a vision. He wanted him to play basketball. Ended up finding out that I was going to be a boy. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to have a little hooper. At that point in time, he was staying home with Jalen, and I was working. So he was home with Jalen 24-7. I'll see you one more time. Growing up, it was just me and my dad in the driveway. Me and my dad at Minnehaha. Thinking back on that, it just kind of humbles you, brings you back to your roots. You, know, you don't need a whole lot to get better in this game. So this is the one that Kobe and Mike use a lot. He's always been around, and we've never had a father-son relationship. We've never had a coach-player relationship. It's always like a best friend relationship, and that's why we can mess around with each other. That's why we can type argue with each other, you know, and know we'll be cool the same way I do with all my homeboys. Yeah, I'm not looking at that. You're gonna look at all this buffness? Oh. This is dad body, man, bought and paid for. My dad is really important to me. He's my biggest inspiration. He's the person I strive to be like every day. I love him to death, and I don't know what I'd do without him. All right, I love you. Once we hit the AAU circuit, that's when it really got to almost like an all-time high because the expectations was, here comes this little skinny seventh grader. What could you really do? We had a really good team that year. Actually, one of my favorite, my favorite AAU teams of all the time that I played on. That's when it really like turned up. My time coming into Under Armour was like at its peak pretty much. We were grassroots sizzle and my pops was coaching. We were new, we were brand new. So everybody looked at us, you know, we didn't have the best team. We didn't have the best recruits, but we always played with a real fearless like dog mentality. 
Get up 15, get up 20, keep this bitch rolling, man. Let's go. And then we had this kid named Chet. It became somebody that everybody in the circuit knew about. All the kids really wanted to do was play basketball. And as they got older, getting scholarship offers. That's why they were playing. Go to college for free. You know, while you're playing, you see Mike Krzyzewski right here. You know, you see John Calipari, Coach Few. You know, you want to do something to pull them over, bring them over to your court, and be able to showcase what you have, you know, for yourself and for your teammates. So that's the main thing about AU, is trying to get everybody to the next level. Money time. There's money time. Can we talk about some of the AU struggles? How much does it cost? <laughs> The toughest part about AAU, I believe, is the financial piece. We were always on a nice little budget in our AAU. We couldn't fly that much. It just it wasn't feasible. But jumping in the trucks, that was great. Everybody had trucks, so you just load them up and drive to wherever we needed to go. We always found a hotel that had free breakfast. Always travel with some air mattresses. So we have about two air mattresses in almost every room. And it's basically like a big sleepover. And everybody just roomed together. Double up on the air mattress and double up in the bed. You ask for extra pillows and extra blankets and you make do with what you got. But we always hoop regardless. So loaded them in the Yukon and we took off cross country. I remember being a young kid looking up to the league's biggest stars. That's why it's so important for me to get back to the next generation. Good, y'all straight, y'all straight. Yeah, let's hoop. So pass there, now come run behind him. Yep, and keep running down the floor. Yep, and then finish. And then we got the same thing going back. Oh no, it was popping back then. You know, you saw a lot of highlights, you saw a lot of good players come from it. Going into that was big time for me. We're out on the circuit. You know, Jalen plays hard, goes at it nonstop, gives 100%. There was a couple times during AU when I ended up getting hurt. I remember one time I can recall where he had a hip pointer, went up, boom, bang the kid, start screaming. Oh, I can't move, I can't move. Once that flip is switched, I don't know anything but playing hard, you know, being competitive and doing what it takes to get the win. And sometimes it's a great thing, and sometimes, you know, that comes with little injuries and stuff like that. He's gotten some injuries, some nicks and some dings. You know, one of the main ones was when I hurt my knee when I wasn't able to play in Steph Curry camp. The first time I got invited to it in my sophomore year, that one was probably the one that hurt me the most. Mom comes running over, you know, her answer to everything is Advil, so she's like, hey, he needs some Advil. Did you take some Advil? Advil's what we use for everything. Yeah, that's what kept me, you know, nice, healthy, and strong. But it's part of the game, you know, those things happen. Fellas, 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 we gotta get up right now. We got a big game, big game, big game. You know, we went through all of that. One, because we just wanted to play basketball. And two, it was a blessing because it made some of our best memories. Like those road trips, looking back on AU were some of the greatest times that I had. Having nothing to do, so just walking to the gas station and cracking jokes and the whole team 12 deep, playing video games, messing around with each other. Like those are some of the best memories that I have playing basketball for real. So you sacrificed your extended family a lot to be with your basketball family, and that really was what we call it. And all the kids, they have been friends for a long time. Their parents were friends, we'd all hang out together. We really had a different team dynamic because of that part. It was everyone wanted the best for everyone. Every time we dunk, it's gotta be loud, just like that. Even though it wasn't luxurious, yeah, it'd be nice to fly everywhere, yeah, it'd be nice to everybody get their own room. Like, we wouldn't have had and made those memories and had those close bonds like we did, you know, without it. So for that, I'm thankful. It's an overtime wrap. It's an overtime wrap. <laughs> Right now, we're headed to Minnehaha, right on River Road, my old home, a place that means a lot to me. I went to the school in sixth grade, new to the school, new to the community. So they took me in and they welcomed me with open arms. And since then, I've gained lifelong friends. You know, I've gained friends who have turned to family, mentors, and they've been a big part of me getting to this next step in my life. So a place and a community I'm definitely grateful for.
miss this place? Absolutely. It's home right here. It's reminisce on everything we did in this gym from big wins, 360s, crazy plays. Coaching here at Minnehaha has been like a dream for me, especially in the last few years, having the privilege of athletes like Jalen Suggs. 2017, my first banner. Ninth grade year, we won the state tournament. And we're back to back in 2018. Sophomore year won the state tournament. Ran through everybody again. Junior year, won the state tournament. And then senior year, everywhere we went was sold out, packed. And like those environments were so much fun. Down in Wisconsin when we had to sneak you guys out the oh. door. <laughs> All that season, gyms were packed. We had to sneak Jalen and Chet Holmgren through back doors to get him to the bus. One of the first time I realized the national impact that Jalen had. This is the Hall of Fame. See, we got the GOAT. I wouldn't have done it without him, that's for sure. Oh, but you put me on JV my first year. What's going on? <laughs> In seventh grade, I put him on the JV team for the first two games of the season. And after the second game, it was evident to me that he needed to be on our varsity team. But what's funny is years later, he is like, why did I have to play JV? And it's like, Jalen, you played two games in JV before we realized we needed you on our varsity team. These are the Gatorade Player of the Year banner, but this one's for football, this is for basketball, both in the same year. He's got a mind for both games. You know, on the court, he's got incredible court intelligence. Having been a football quarterback, same thing. He could have played either sport. Do you miss football? Every day of the week. I miss football every day of the week. We're down here at the South Campus, headed to the weight room right now in our practice field. Yeah, just come see the guys up real quick, say what's up. Oh boy, looking big now. I love playing here. Basketball, football, all the coaches were great. It was just an amazing experience. I mean, every, everybody who I met that was on my team, which I was always close with, we made great memories. We won a lot, talking about a football team. We went two state championships, won one. Put me high on the map at an athletic school, which wasn't known as before. Derwin J! <laughs> how you doing, my guy? Oh, good, how are you? It's good to see you. See you too. Uh, how are you? How are you? I'm good. We got Jalen Suggs in the house today. Hey, it's exciting. Players are super excited to see him. You know, he's larger than life around here. I was real comfortable out on the football field. I, I call this a lot of damage. Friday nights, if you wanted to watch a show, come watch Jalen play football. All guys, no breeze. I played quarterback, I played running back, I played wide receiver. His escapability can get outside the pocket, and then he can throw with the best of them. Played a lot of safety, the end even. You know, I did it all. He was able to put all that together in his own package, and it was his Jalen Suggs package. It's a nice block from Jalen Suggs. Before the start of games, you know, the players of the other team would just stare at him. He's so big and he's throwing passes. And some of the opposing players are asking for his autograph for the start of the game. I'm like, oh, never seen that before. And the quarterback number one, Jalen Song. Miss these days. You know, I think definitely ones I, you know, for sure took for granted. Don't think anybody really like, likes to practice, but you know, I think even football practice, I look forward to it. And I wish I could come back out here for another week of game prep because it was, it was the best feeling. Um, P-A-C-K, Wolfpack, Wolfpack, Wolfpack. Let's go! Let's go! Football, my senior year, was a real fun time. Pretty much the most dominant I felt in sports to this point. It's a different type of camaraderie when you play football, and that is the ultimate team for him, is a football team. But we were ready to go, and our defense was nasty, and our offense was nasty, and we hit the ground running. A lot of his buddies there were just blue-collar, regular kids that just love playing football. And you need that to be on a good team. But we were just dominating everybody we played. Who can beat us? No one. No one. And we get to the section championship. And to this day, that section championship game against Benil St. Margaret for the second year in a row is my favorite sports game I've ever played in my life. Yeah, that's the Thanos. Hey, they gonna get Thanos thing, you feel me? 
After we had blown everybody out all year, we were undefeated, and we were the underdogs, actually. We were picked by everybody to lose that game. That was actually one of the coolest games I've ever been to. It's packed. Everybody's there. Minnesota winters were coming, and so it was extremely cold. It was like raining. It was terrible weather, but the game made up for it. So we start off hot. I get a big throw to start the game to tie. We end up capping the drive off with Asanje. They finished the half out real strong. Then I'm going up 21-14 to end the half. So now it's like, all right, we got a game. We're going back and forth the whole second half. As the second half is going on, you see people creep onto the sidelines to the point where like midway through the third quarter, the whole sidelines is just packed with fans. You gotta play football now. The sidelines were crowded, the stands were packed, but they came down and scored and there was barely any time left. Peterson is sacked. Now we got the ball, like a minute 50. We gotta make something happen. It's a low snap. I fumble it. Nobody picks it up. Run! Okay, run! I'm going up the sidelines, I'm running. <sighs> and I get tackled at like the 30 with like 50 seconds left. I see there in single man, cover zero. I'm telling the running back, pick up the blitz off the edge. I remember all this like it was yesterday. Terry 101. Boom, Terry runs the route. Boom, boom, boom. Breaks him off in the middle. I throw it over top. I'm running, I'm lit. The well, four, they get you about the 50. They had three-man side, they're running trips, so I know they're coming to the scene. They're about to run verticals. Back to pass, steps into the pocket. I read it, pick it off, put the ball above my head, run into the sidelines, throw it in the air. Take a knee, and everybody's running on the field now. Running on that field, had my Snapchat on, everybody's going crazy. Jalen came over, he was like, I'm that guy, I'm that guy. I just take a knee and start crying because it was so much that had gone into that game. It's so much emotion for me in football in general, but that meant a lot to me. And to come out on top, you know, football is always something that people doubted me about, but to prove it there in one of the biggest stages so far, like that game meant a lot. What are you feeling right now? It means the world to me. Like, I, I don't know what's next for me in my career. I don't know how long I'll be playing this sport, but this is one of the most special moments in my life. <laughs> so to this day, that game is my favorite sports game I've ever played in. That's legendary. That's legendary. Then we get to the state championship game. We kind of go back and forth in that one. Take a tough loss to end the game. They went on a two-point conversion in overtime. You know, we had our chances to win it. A game that I still haven't gone back and watched. Probably will never go back and watch. It's one of those ones that you feel sick about. I ended the season. You know, we had a great year. Personally, I ended up winning Mr. Football. It wasn't how I wanted to leave football, but it wasn't a bad way because team-wise, we had a really good year and personally, I had a great year. So yeah, if that was my last hoorah and I said it after the game, you know, I can't be too mad at it. Here we go. One pack up three, family on six. One, two, three. One pack. One pack, six. Family. Oh, thank you, dog. We're on our way to the fair right now. Uh, about to go meet up with some family, some friends, little cousins, nephews, nieces, go run around, have a good time. You know, it was different back when I used to go as a kid. You know, I used to be around running around and winning all the basketballs and playing all the games to now where, you know, I get to just kick back, have a good time, and, you know, watch the little ones run around. So, you know, ready to get there, have a good time, eat some food, get on some rides, and just chill. State Fair is something I look forward to every year. It's become like a yearly tradition, and it's, it's that way for a lot of people in Minnesota. We're at the fair right now. You know, just coming to meet up, see some family, have a good time, get some food in us for sure. Created a lot of memories at the State Fair, and I was there every summer, to end every summer, since I could remember, to kind of eat food and ride rides and just let loose, you know, and just enjoy ourselves for a night. Hey, I got you. Is he a real quarterback or no? Hold on. You're the quarterback? Yeah. Don't look like it. <laughs> <laughs>
Boy, this thing is... You gotta get it in the store. Boy, this thing is tilted. I bet you couldn't get it in. I get it in all day. <laughs> Boy, you see that thing's not even right. Bro, yeah, I'll go one more. There you go, finally. Not only did he do basketball scholarships, football scholarships started coming in also. There it is, I like that. I got one last thing. I got just little gifts outside for everybody. Jalen got his first offer in the sixth grade, and a lot of offers started coming in. I got a lot of football offers, you know, kind of started my freshman year. I remember Ohio State came my sophomore year, and then I remember my Georgia offer came after a practice. That was a big one for me. I remember going on my visit to Alabama, and didn't end up getting that one. Uh, you know, Nick Saban wasn't really rocking with the both sports. He kind of wanted me to play football. But across the country, there wasn't a Division I basketball program that wasn't calling. I got everybody. All the kind of bigger schools, all the ones that you want to go to, I got, except for uh, most of the Blue Bloods. I didn't really get the Blue Bloods like that, which is funny because that's, that's what I wanted, you know, my whole life. I was a UNC fan growing up. To never get that offer, I don't know, it was weird and it kind of made me want to create my own path and do, you know, what I wanted to do. Minnesota, Iowa, Florida State, Gonzaga, and those are the ones that were really, you know, heavily considered. But if you had paid attention, he only visited one school. <laughs> Sophomore year in high school, his name came across as a, you know, potential down the road. I don't really get too fired up usually when you're talking about sophomores because I'm kind of focused on the high school seniors that are going to join you. But, you know, once we, I started glancing at some highlights and stuff, I'm like, whoa, this kid's got some real ability. And that's the hardest thing to coach is that feel for the game. And he actually saw those things. He said not only could he see them, but he was physically gifted enough to deliver on a lot of them. You could also tell the football influence, man. There was nothing that he backed away from whatsoever. You know, we had an inkling that basketball was gonna be his future, you know, but I also knew after talking to him in the recruiting process, just how much he loved football too. So when did you know? <laughs> uh, I... I remember it was like, a week before I was supposed to commit. And I was committing after we played Park Center on ESPN at halftime of the Sierra Canyon game. He's like, do I play big time collegiate football or do I play collegiate basketball? A lot of the schools, you know, told me that I could play both football and basketball, but, you know, I kind of knew I didn't want to play both. I wanted to have all my focus on it once I got to that point. You know, I didn't want nothing pulling me away from it. I didn't want nothing distracting me because once it got there, I knew that I had to put in some work to get to the next level, to the point where I could take care of my family and play at the highest, highest level. When I went to visit my junior year, Spokane felt like home to me. The fans embraced me, the coaches became really close, almost like family to me. It felt like from what I had at me, haha you know, welcomed me with open arms and they gave me each and everything I needed. After that visit, it was Gonzaga or football. Him and my dad and my mom had a lot of conversations about it. I had a long talk, a lot of long talks about it. And it was, you could tell it was like taking a toll on him mentally. It was like a hard decision, that's your future. We talked a lot about visits that he had been on, pros and cons of different schools, pros and cons of playing football over basketball. It really came down to what we thought would be the best spot for him to be successful. 
I should have to say too much. I knew y'all ready to go. I knew y'all ready to go. And then ultimately, I told him, I said, you know, the contracts are a lot better in basketball. I have no doubt he could have gone to college and played football and been successful. He would still be in college, though. Part of the reason I chose Gonzaga was because it didn't have a football team. Because if I went anywhere with a football team, I know that thought would have creeped in my head. I would have went to watch a practice messed around with a had pads on and then they wouldn't have seen me awful and i knew that opportunity that basketball gave me i had a really high possibility of just going to school for you know eight months playing basketball and then going to the draft so yeah i didn't know no like realistically i didn't know until about a couple days before i committed I had to go home and get my shirt because I forgot my Gonzaga shirt at home. And he called me and he was like, Mom, do you have my shirt? And I had to drive home, grab my shirt. It kept calling me, blowing me up, like, you're going to be back in time. Like, There's a couple minutes left. Like, where you at? It was kind of like a reflection moment. Like, this is crazy. Like, I'm really about to commit. I've gone through so much just in my sports career. AAU tournaments, high school games, like all that leading to this point now where, you know, I'm about to decide where I'm about to go next year and, you know, kind of move on to that next chapter. I knew it was Gonzaga, but like deep down, like I always wanted, like I wanted to pick football. I really wanted to play football. And I just got emotional. Like, it's like, am I making a mistake? I'm like trying to think to myself, like, am I really making the right decision? Because I know I love football. I know I can play football at the highest level. And I, I was crying. I don't want to give it up, but the main thing that I've always wanted to do is take care of my family, take care of the people I love. You know, as I got there, I had all my friends and family behind me. Everybody who supported me huddled up and, you know, crowded around me as I made the decision. I'll be furthering my basketball and academic career at Gonzaga University. He was still disappointed <laughs> about not playing football, but he was so excited to make that his choice. It was really, I was super proud of him. A decision that, you know, I don't regret at all. You know, I'm very happy I made. Doesn't mean that wasn't easy. You know, it was very hard. I mean, he cried for a whole week because basically that was the last time that he was ever gonna play football. Honestly, everybody was a little shocked. Not at where he was going, because it was a little obvious, but like the fact that it was, he chose basketball and football. Yeah. Because like if you knew him and you knew him like personally, you knew football was his everything. Yes, yeah, so after that, it was a big relief. That decision was over with. Sad as it was, I closed the book on football. You know, now it's time to finish the senior year off right. I gotta ask you, what's your motivation? Deadline's coming, and I knew I had to commit somewhere. He could have went to the NFL easily. It brought a different joy out, you know what I'm saying? Gonzaga University. Sad as it was, closed the book on football. 2020, we're having a great season. There started being a little rumblings that, you know, people were kind of getting sick. My goal for senior year was to win it all. Definitely a game for the ages and came to our next big decision. The reason I love basketball is a complex question. Life is for the live, and I'm gonna live it. Football is over, all my focus was on hoops. This is the last year of high school, I wanna end it out the right way. We're having a great season. We had a game against LeBron James, Son. James knocks it down. Telling everybody we're getting ready to go into state. Son curving his way to the basket. Top goal, win state. We've accomplished that goal the last three years. We were just three games away from winning another state title. Suggs finishes himself. COVID comes. Fans, due to unforeseen circumstances, the game tonight has been postponed. The NBA stops play. You know, I was praying our season didn't get canceled. After that, things just continued to spiral. It seemed like the world was on fire.
by George Floyd Square right now. And this is where everything went down at. It was about 10 minutes away from the crib. Places were getting burned down. Cops were all over. Riot gear, National Guard was called in. All throughout the night, you could hear flashbangs, people yelling. Jalen, you the Jalen Suggs? Yeah, yeah. Come on, dog. All right, okay. God bless you. You want to plant a flower? All right, can I? Walk, I'll show you what we Hard time for the city, but I think a lot of the city really united through it. You know, Black Lives Matter really began, and we're seeing more people held accountable for their actions. It's crazy how a tragedy can turn into you know something so beautiful. Now, your fee for doing this is this: you have to repeat after me. It's not how good we are. It's not how good we are. It's how good we want to be. It's how good we want to so be. So you want five championships? Write it down. Yes, sir. Sign your name to it. Yes, sir. A dark time for the country, especially for our city. You know, definitely not something that we needed, but what we have here now is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. We get the section championship. Coaches came in and said, this is going to be our last game. I just remember texting me and sent out, you know, come, it's our last game of the season. There's no state. We come out, the gym was packed, over capacity. Everybody was there to see the show. One of those moments where it's just kind of going with the flow. Everything just feels right. Everything feels perfect in that time. That's some of the most free, funnest basketball that we had played as a team that year and that I had played probably during high school. I think I played the whole game with a smile on my face. That was high school. We didn't come back to school. We did everything online. Knowing, knowing that it was the end, I think we all kind of looked at each other. We all embraced each other. You know, let's go out and enjoy this for like it's our last. And that's exactly what we did. I still go back and watch that game, watch the highlights, just because there was so much joy in that building that day. You know, it's one that you'll never forget. Today, we're on our way down to Florida Southern. Help my boy Donovan move into his dorm. Me and Donovan go way back. We've known each other since we've been kids on the west side. Happy for him that he got a scholarship to Florida Southern. Time to go give him the essentials and move him into his dorm. What's good, brother? Welcome. Welcome. Me to the crib, man. Right? Florida Southern is right in the Lakeland area. And I'm in Orlando, so it's about 45 to an hour away, which is it's a blessing close to where I'm at. Yeah, everybody else got TVs. That's what I'm saying. We got to do a lot of shopping, folks. I'll carry a suitcase. TV, I don't fit on that. Not on that, on this. I'm not gonna bash the room. I mess with it, but you know, it's just something to start with. It's okay to say you've seen better. I've seen better. My relationship with Jalen, man, he's like a big brother to me. You know, he teaches me a lot, you know, off the court and on the court. I told Donovan about college, just enjoy it, take it all in. College is a fun time. There are going to be times that you look back on, you know, and always remember for the rest of your life. I haven't even been to an Orlando Magic game yet, so, you know, he's about only 40 minutes away from me now, so I'll definitely be at the games now. It'll probably come to mind, you know, so, so it worked out perfectly. George Floyd was happening. With COVID and that, the whole world shut down. Really, we're in the house all the time. Very difficult summer. Nobody's hanging out with each other. We got to send them to school. I'm getting ready to go to college. I'm all packed. And then my parents get COVID. So I can't leave yet. So I got to quarantine. And then my sisters get COVID. So now I got to chill another 14 days. Now I'm a whole month late. Everybody else has been at, at school for a month and I've just been sitting at home. And it was annoying. It was tough. I just wanted to leave. I didn't get it. Campus was closed. We didn't get to move him into his dorm. The only students on campus were athletes. Nobody traveled, nobody went to visit friends. Like everybody was just at the school, did online class and just played basketball. That's just kind of what life was at the time. I had about two weeks to kick it and get adjusted and I get COVID. 
schools were putting COVID cases into hotels off campus. So I just took them and put them in my basement. He gave me space to chill and got to work out down there, ride the bike and things like that. It was difficult. I missed a month and a half of my college summer. You know, everybody else got to hang out, run around, have fun, and get used to college. It wasn't what we envisioned. It wasn't what we looked like when he picked Gonzaga, but we were so thankful that he actually got to have a college season. The season rolls around. We can't play our regular schedule. We can't just fly everywhere. So we go to Florida. We quarantine first two days, then we get to practice a little bit. It gave them a really cool team dynamic because they had to spend a lot of time together. The hotel experience was so ridiculously bland. <laughs> I mean, we'd go on the road sometimes. They wouldn't let us meet in rooms. We'd have to pick up our pregame meal in a brown bag and take it to our room. We had no fans. There was no juice. He never played a game at Gonzaga in a full arena. The group of guys in our roster was really special. They made it all worth it. They made it all easier. I wouldn't have wanted to go through it with anybody else because of how much fun we ended up making out of the situation. We had a, an older group that just brought the energy, brought, brought the enthusiasm. Game time, the guys would show up and play great. Kansas was our first game. Yeah, that game was lit. I started the game off, my first two points were a dunk, a body. I think I had like 24 and nine. We beat Auburn the next day. Boom, boom, boom. Playing all these teams, winning a lot of games. We were hooping, we were clicking. It was a fun start to the year. No difference, but you know, fun start. Initially, we were gonna redshirt Andrew Nemhart because of a transfer, but at that point, the NCAA was giving out waivers right and left. I remember going to him and asking, okay, hey, I think we can get Andrew eligible here. How do you feel about that? He's a point guard. And he just got the biggest grin on his face and said, oh my God, coach, we could be so good with me and him in the backcourt. And I've always found that throughout my whole career, the really good ones are never, ever threatened. We were all brothers and we spent a lot of time with each other and we played for each other and we bought into the system. We carried that, you know, throughout the whole season. We were just taking everybody's best shot and beating teams rather handily. So you look at the schedule, say, hey, you know what? You guys could possibly go undefeated all the way throughout the season. To play at that level with everybody trying to knock you off that entire year with no home court advantage whatsoever, which is so big up here, it was pretty amazing for 18 to 22 year olds. We ended up going undefeated on a regular season. You know, we get to conference tournament. We win that, you know, and now we're going into March Madness. I remember being a young kid looking up to the league's biggest stars. That's why it's so important for me to get back to the next generation. Good, y'all straight, y'all straight. Yeah, let's hoop. So pass there. Now come run behind him. Yeah, and keep running down the floor. Yeah, and then finish. And then we got the same thing going back. We get to March Madness time. You know, something I've always dreamed of playing in, but it's in a bubble. We don't get to travel. We don't get to go to different cities. Our family decided that we were gonna move to Indianapolis for the length of the tournament. Downtown Indianapolis, the 16 against the one. First round, we handle business beat Norfolk State. Round two, and we get Oklahoma, and now we're on to the Sweet 16. Sweet 16, we got Creighton, but we end up shutting that down. Lead eight, we have USC, come out and handle business, get a 20 point win. On the floor, we get UCLA. They've been a Cinderella team that year, and those are the hardest teams to beat. Bruins' extraordinary run from the first four to the final four as they get set to take on unbeaten Gonzaga. We were very confident as a team. You know, we knew that we had each and every tool that we needed to make a run at the whole thing. We just tried to stay as focused as we could, kind of carry that swag. Like, yeah, you know, we're a good team. We can play with anybody, and you know, that's exactly what we did. He puts a goal down, he makes it. So, you know, one of his goals was to win a national title or have a chance to win one. Honestly, the UCLA game is like the most stressful thing I've ever experienced like in my whole life. Still gives me goosebumps like to this day to like think about it. Like one of the best basketball games I've ever watched. Definitely a 
a game for the ages. Let's get it started. We was going back and forth all game. I was playing well, Corey was playing well, Joel was hooping, all of their players were hooping. You know, Johnny was having a great game, Jaime, Tiger. And it was just a battle. Nice pass. Oh, a block oh. by Suggs, oh my gosh. And we are heading to overtime. I think we were up five and we had a real bonehead play where we gave up a wide open three and then, you know, we came down and missed a shot and then... Tiger got a switch, put up a floater, got his own rebound and... Ties it with three! I thought we were going to another overtime, which I wasn't sure that I could handle. I glanced at the clock and I saw that, you know, he had about five seconds to get up there. So I was like, that's more than enough time for him to get across half court. Got it out quick. Try to get as far up the court as I can, get my team a shot. No panic on our guys in. The ball got to the right spot. He used the right number of dribbles and he put it up. And I just left my hand. It looked good. It felt good. Gonzaga has time to do something. So he comes across half court. He lets it go. I drifted to the left a little bit. Had a little Tiger Woods. Sucks for the win. It was money. Jumping up and down, screaming, yelling, crying. Jail has a torn ACL, but we're jumping up and down. The emotion came and pumping my fist, start crying. And I don't know, first instinct was just go to the table. And, you know, there was a cardboard fans in there, but a couple rows behind him, I, there was my family right there. Running over and jailing up on the scorer's table. I mean, what an iconic moment. Cemented in history as one of the greatest shots in the Final Four. Arguably one of the greatest moments in NCAA tournament history. You know, what a night, what a game that was. Unbelievable! Oh, oh. The perfect season remains oh. on go! After that, my phone was going crazy. Four or five hundred text messages. My phone was even blowing up for him. It's like every time we picked up the remote, boom, Jalen and that shot was on there. Everything you saw was the shot, the shot, the shot. I was like, you just shot it perfect. I ended up having to turn my phone off because it was just going ridiculous. Everyone's texting me, everyone's trying to call me. Jalen Rashawn Suggs, West St. Paul, Minnesota. He's like that. Right now, man, we're about to head to the gym. The main gym where we're going to be playing out and stuff this year, so we're going to go in there and get some shots up. Yeah, this is my new home, man. This is a shooter's gym. Absolutely. Why do you think I came here? I taught you how to shoot. Let me just, let me just take y'all home real quick, bro. That's it. Wilson, NCAA tournament ball? Yeah. Bank shot. <laughs> Gonzaga Final Four. Last name Suggs. It was just the wrong Suggs. I hit it. Watch this. I'll hit it. Come off right here. Uh, grab it. It's about half. Keep it. Sucks for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Go. That natty baby. So we came here for. I kind of took the night, celebrated it, you know, and then once morning came, I woke up. It was right back to business. Obviously, the locker room was just euphoric and just nuts, and yet physically just exhausted. You know, to be a parent, I was very proud to say that, you know, that was my, my son and he's going to have a chance to play in the NCAA championship. You know, we still had another game to play, but we still had to go play Baylor. They were a good team. They're having a great year. I just remember the Sunday was just a blur. You know, you got a quick turnaround, you got to practice, all kinds of media. And obviously, they all wanted to talk about the shot, but then we needed to move on to Baylor. And I just, I remember that our guys were just physically and kind of mentally, almost spiritually exhausted. It is a dream matchup, Baylor and Gonzaga. National Championship Day comes, ready to hoop, locked in, you know, and they come out firing on all cylinders. Sucks. Blocked by Teague. We just can never respond to their opening run. Baylor, national champions. Took a tough one. You know, that was one that we definitely wanted. Would have been a storybook ending. You know, life don't always work that way. There it is. I like that. I got 
got one last thing. Uh, I got just little gifts outside for everybody. After the championship game, there was only one spot to go. He came home, and I think it just helped him mentally. I mean, he's been gone for so long. We spent some time as a family and came to our next big decision. I will be uh, entering my name uh, into the NBA draft. Draft time rolls around. Uh, we end up going to New York. An unforgettable night. Nice suited and booted. Speculation said that Jalen can go one through five. First name goes off. Boom. There goes Kate. Second name goes off. Jalen Green in Houston. I see my boys getting taken. Third name goes off. Mobley, Cleveland. But it was really stressful. This is the one time in basketball that a parent and the child do not hold the destiny of where they're going to go next. Everyone. Every single person was like, oh, this man's going fourth. Jalen Suggs is going fourth. Boom, his good friend Scotty Barnes goes to Toronto. Orlando is on the board. Agent picks up the phone, he smiles, says something to Jalen. Jalen got that call, and I was like shaking, like so much, like my whole body shaking. I was so, I don't know why I was so nervous. And Miles looked at me, he said, Orlando's gonna take you. The Orlando Magic select Jalen Suggs. I put my head down for a second. Finally, like, you could see, like, the relief. I got to hug my family. I took my time then to kind of get my emotions out. You know, I let a couple of tears flow. It was so emotional when his name got called. So much is just going through my brain that, like, I don't know, I just started crying. That was just one of those moments where, you know, I told him, I said I was proud of him, that I love him, and I've been proud of him ever since he's been born. It made me emotional just because he's one of my best friends and I'm so super excited for him and super happy for him. And go shake Adam Silver's hand and begin this next chapter of my life. We in the Sunshine State now. It's crazy to think that a whole year has passed and I'm going into year two of the NBA. You know, it feels like time was really flown. Yesterday I got my name called and it was the selection to the Orlando Magic, so yeah, it's crazy. I saw palm trees as soon as we got into the city. So I was excited automatically. Looking forward to no winners. Definitely excited about that part. I think that's the part that I was most excited about. I pulled up to my sister's school. Are you finna put it on? I got two younger sisters, two little knuckleheads. JL is the youngest and Jenica Riley. I'm so happy, I'm so thankful that Jalen, you know, decided to take us with them. I wanted it to be something they wanted to do, but really deep down in my heart, I wanted them to be here as well. Those two are my role dogs. They've been everywhere with me. They've been to every game. You know, I'm with them every day. You know, even though we mess around and it looks like we fight a lot, that's really just, you know, how we go. I love those two to death. They're starting to get old on me now, which is happening a bit too fast. Is there anybody ever played in the NBA? I think the closest is Charlie Ward. Went to Florida State, won the Heisman, ended up playing in the NBA for a couple years. But yeah, nobody has ever touched like NBA, NFL. That's like forbidden territory for real. I don't really know the proper way. Okay. Pinky there. Is it something you would consider? Yeah, it's something I consider. <laughs> he gave up something that he loved so much when he was in high school. I don't feel bad, but like, you know, I feel bad sometimes. Like, I think the sad part is just like, he didn't only do it for himself. Like, he did it for his family, he did it for us, he did it for my parents. Yeah, I just came back from Wisconsin. I was at their game, first game of the season. Dog, that stadium, the way it rocks, the energy, the boy, I was ready to throw some pads on and go play. Like, you got yeah. a different playing Nah, there's, there's no feeling like it, I promise. There's nothing, it, like, here won't compare to it. Even the NBA don't compare to no like college football stadium. I'm used to that. So going from playing in front of like. Ah, shit, that's what I wanted, and that's what I fed off. I, I played better whenever there was more people in the crowd and all that. Like, that's, that's when I stepped up. Man, what put on a show? Did you just see what he did? He gave up like honestly like his whole childhood into a sport just to help like his family. That's my family, and you know I love him to death. Ready? The ball. We mess around with each other, we have fun, but at the end of the day, you know, we love each other with our whole hearts. Set, hut, hut, hut. 
it worked out. I think they like it down here. I think they've adapted to Florida lifestyle real well. <laughs> oh, that's a dime. It's like, I wouldn't want to like only have to see him a couple times a year, which would definitely happen if we didn't live here. It's nice to have your big brother always there and know that you can always go to him. When we get to the season, things move quick. Flights, late nights, stuff I wasn't accustomed to yet, but a lot of fun. I think it was a good rookie season. You're playing against LeBron. That's so weird to me that you're literally playing against LeBron. You're dunking on people like you look up to. We had some good games. I think my favorite one was in New York, first one of the season. Jalen Suggs, the rookie. The Chicago game, you know, I end up coming down the lane, split a pick and roll, and... Suggs comes right back at him, and DeRozan is on the floor. That was the first time I dunked on somebody in a while. The Rising Stars game for All-Star Weekend. Suggs. Oh! You know, I get to go back home. It was a really good team win. First career bucket inside target center. My welcome to the NBA moment was playing James Harden and KD. KD had 30 on like 10 of 11, didn't even break a sweat. A difficult shot by Kevin Durant. It was definitely a roller coaster. 82 game season. You're gonna catch a couple losses at 60. You didn't know that that was coming. Every level I've been in, I've won. This was the first time that we lost a lot. It was something I wasn't used to. So doing everything in my power to change that culture. And then there were injuries. Went down hard. Rookie season was hurt a bit more than you know I'd like to be. He was playing very well. Boom, goes down with an injury. Got hit right over the thumb. That knocked him out up for a little while. That's the first time in his life that he's ever had to sit out that many games. Keep it up, six, seven. They go eight. Come on, now they go and ten. It's definitely frustrating. You know, you hate to miss time. You hate not being out there with your teammates. You know, then you work hard rehabbing, trying to get back to the highest level. You know, just to have it happen again. Suggs is grabbing around that right ankle. I'd missed time before. It's not like I'd never gotten hurt before. It just happened to be a bit longer than I'd wanted to, and in a time where I didn't want it to happen. We were trying to focus today on some ankle stability patterns combined with some core contractions, right? Making sure we stabilize the body as a unit and making sure he endures more in that 82 game protocol. And back, there you go, there you go, boom. Injuries are very humbling. It makes you never take basketball for granted. Now they go eight, get seven, six, good job, five, come on. Taking care of your body is really important. Making sure that I'm in tip top shape and my body is you know, at its peak so I can perform at my best. Now that this is your job, are you still able to like find the fun and joy open? Yeah, I, I was able to find joy in hooping still. It disappeared for a bit. The only time I contemplated not playing basketball was last year, real realization that I would never play football again and that this is what I was gonna do forever. So Jalen at one point like told Larry and I how much he misses football. I was like, we miss that too. He was different from everybody else. He had the work ethic was there, the talent was there. You just knew he was special. I talked to him about it a lot just because it was such a hard decision for him. Like I couldn't imagine having to choose between two things I love. I always thought that he would go football because I thought personally he was better at football. He's naturally good in both of them. I think that as hard as in football, for years me and him will go at it because I think he should have went to the NFL. It's where like when you get to the top and to the point where everybody wants to be at, you know, I was the saddest. But I think I got so focused on getting to the point that I didn't celebrate little things about the process and the journey on the way there. I think a lot of it came from I was looking at missing football and how much I would miss not having it instead of how much I loved having basketball. You know, I was looking at that negative instead of the positive. I'm crisscross applesauce right now. It's not okay. I have a great support system around me. I have a great circle, people who I love and trust. Jalen knows the family is important. We'll always be here for him. But ultimately, his family is bigger than that. His family is the whole community. As a kid, I used to rock jerseys all the time. All my favorite players, all my favorite teams. 
you know, then I get to the NBA and you know, see kids wearing my jersey, adults wearing my jersey with my name on the back and my number, you know, and then I get to go back home and pass them all out to the people I care for and love for who helped me get to this point where I'm at. And he always makes time for people that need an autograph or that need a picture, and that's one of the things that everybody around the country loves him for. It feels great to be an NBA player. I think my favorite part about it is that I'm able to use my platform to spread a lot of happiness. Play with kids in pregame, throw them the ball in the stands and use my platform, you know, to impact other people. That's what brings me, you know, joy. Call mom. Hello. Yeah, what's up, mama? Miss you. I'm about to uh, come over for dinner, kick it with you, Jenica, JL, and dad tonight. Uh, you need anything from the store? Sure, why don't I make hamburgers? We get some hamburger buns and some cheese for me, please. Most definitely, I got you. I'll see you later, mama. Love you, bye. All right, love you too. Mama! From a standpoint of I can take care of my family, I've been able to move them into their own home with a pool, with a guest house, with everything they need, good neighborhood. I can help out my grandma, I can help out my friends. From that standpoint, yeah, I made it. From my competitive standpoint and on the basketball side, I'm not there yet. In terms of his family, he's always put them first, like he'll always take care of them. We've all sacrificed a lot, and we did not do that expecting anything except for we just wanted him to be successful. But for him to be able to move us to Florida, get us a beautiful house, it doesn't mean that there's not difficulties, but it's been wonderful. Oh my God. <laughs> I am proud of myself. I'm proud of myself because I think every day I try to be the best person that I can be. Your rookie season is probably the hardest season just because you have so many expectations on you. I want to be as perfect as I can in my sport. You know, I never want to lose. I never want to make a mistake, but you know, it's bound to happen. And with Jalen, he wants to be the best right away. But just staying positive through it all and knowing that it's all going to work out. And so I don't think anybody should ever give up on a guy like him. He put on for the state of Minnesota, football, basketball. He did his thing at Gonzaga. And now, you know, like there's still so much more to come. He's still so young. The reason I love basketball is a complex question that is built up of a lot of things. It's my competitive side wanting to come out. It's won me tons of championships. It's introduced me to friends who have become family. It's put me in a position where I can take care of everybody I want to take care of while playing a beautiful game. For what the game has provided for me, I am forever in debt. I'm really excited to watch Jalen's second year. He's in such a different place than he was in going into his rookie season. Shot clock at seven, play switches on to Suggs. Shot clock at five. When these veteran teams come into Orlando, I think they'll have a good fight on their hands from the young guys as soon as they step on the court. Suggs for three, good! He's the type of guy to do better with a chip on his shoulder and something to prove, so I wouldn't doubt him. Suggs, a three for the lead, it's good! My goals are to be the best Jalen possible. No matter what happens in that, I know I can always be a good big brother. I know I can always be a good son. I always use my platform to help others and inspire others and bring joy, so yeah, I'm, I, I'm proud of myself. Just stuck with it. You know, we had a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation last night, just us as players, about what we need to do and, you know, how about we need to change this culture, you know, get used to winning. And that's exactly what we did today. Jalen Suggs, 21 years old, second year in the league, joint life, family guy, simple guy, yeah, just doing me.
lot. We always come through here when we were kids. Long day of school, come straight right here into the living room. And grandma's got all the pictures. How are you doing? I love you. Mm. Yes, when you were a little boy. My grandma's the GOAT. She is constantly a good time, the most selfless person. She's my biggest fan. There's another one that's just dedicated to me. Favorite grandchild. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Always kept the basketball on me. Oh, that on was me. good. The favorite grandchild. Yes, he Always is. Always kept the basketball on me. You are funny. This one's my best one. We went to Valley Fair. And Jalen wanted to get a basketball so bad. He tried and tried, and the guy kept telling him, you know what, little boy, you can move up. And Jalen's like, no way am I moving up. You didn't give up, and that's the ball you wanted. We're heading outside. I got a surprise. Yeah, Grandma Flo's been around all the time. She's my biggest fan at every sporting event. Hear somebody screaming, definitely my Grandma Flo. She has a very distinct voice. <laughs> yeah, she's the best. Oh, and I've been saving this forever for him. 18 years, here it is, right here is the ball that he won that I've been saving. Isn't that wild I still have it though? That's a good one, huh? Yeah, this is my rock. You wanted man. that so bad, I love it. Every summer we go to the fair, uh, you know, we're gonna go later. Another year and we're here. You've been into it for a while. It's not fun to see, isn't it, Jay? Younger Jalen is my first grandchild. Absolutely first grandchild. I was ecstatic and I always wanted all boys, so he was a boy, so I was really happy then. It's great to see how much he's grown and learned even in one year how much older I can't like you're still my little Jay so I, I think I'm as little but how much prouder could you be like you know and not only just because of what he's accomplished for himself but because he is such a nice person you're already a kind kid so I love to see that take a selfie come on Yo, thank you, bro. I've never seen him pass a little kid that he hasn't stopped and said hi to and that to me makes much more difference than Maybe how many baskets he makes in a game. That's what you really want to do in life. Because you only have one to live, so live it well. People aren't going to remember what you did, but they'll remember how you make them feel. He interacts with so many different type of people, and he has such a great personality that he just vibes with everyone. And I think he's just a really caring guy, a really selfless guy, and he'll never let the attention or the fact that he's in the NBA get to him. Like, he's always going to stay the same, and I really appreciate him for that. Yeah, what ride you want to go on? On the big slide. Go on the slide? Yeah, I'll go on the slide with you. My pops, he did daycare. When I was born, he started doing it with a couple of our friends, kids. Paloma and Nori are my youngins. They're two of the little ones who did daycare with my dad. And I remember Paloma when she was little, little, and she was the cutest little thing. And we'd always kick it and mess around. And then Nori, from the day he came, that was my dog. Like, it's funny, like, I'm talking about him like we're the same age, but like, we just became really close. And we spent a lot of time together. And, you know, kind of as he got a bit older, my mom would just send him to come wake me up every day because she knew that if she came wake me up, probably be a little bit. If Nori came and woke me up, I'd wake up a bit quicker. My mom was working for the county. She the rock of the family. You know, she's the one that I, you know, if me and my pops do get into it, I go get away from him. I just go to my, my dudes. So we can figure out what we're doing for food? When basketball came, you know, she was always there and watching every game, yelling and screaming and cheering. We do every, all the little things for our family, sacrifice so much for me and my sisters that, you know, you can never really repair it. You can just, you know, love her every day and try to give her everything you can. Yeah, love my dudes. Today is the fifth anniversary of my dad's death. We could come visit and this is our family headstone. So um, these are my great grandparents, Earl and Dorothy, uh, my great aunt Pat, and then my dad. 
I haven't been back here for like two years, it's been about. He loved the heck out of my kids. He tried to get Jalen to play hockey for about six minutes. Uh, hockey was his thing. Hockey was on my mom's side, that was the sport. My dad, it was all football, basketball, but they all loved hockey. And they always did take me to hockey games, try to get me to play hockey. For Christmas, I'd get, uh, I'd get little sticks, um, you know, and pucks. And yeah, it's just funny how all of that side was all straight hockey, you know, and my dad's side was basketball, football. Yeah, my dad's incredibly proud of Jalen. He always was. All the grandkids, all of his kids as well. Me, Molly, Megan, Jenica, JL. Max, my little guy, he's proud of all of us. Didn't matter what our sports accomplishments were, didn't matter what our school accomplishments were, he was proud of us because we we're good kids, good people. We did the right things for the right reasons. That was most important to our family. Okay, so we're at Gus Gus, the best new restaurant in St. Paul. It just opened in 2022. My cousin, Kevin, and his wife own the restaurant. This is their first restaurant that they've opened together, so we're super excited to be here today. Spiced corn nuts. You like that? I've never had it. Oh, what? should we try it? They're really good. Sure. Okay, we can try it. I what like you the want? corn nut or nuts. That's nuts. Are you a corn nut? Are you a nut corn? I am a nutty corn. <laughs> For me, family is just the people I feel most comfortable with, you know, and people who I know regardless of what happens, basketball, football, you know, whatever goes on in my life that, you know, are still going to be with me and uh, love me the same exact way. People that I'll do anything for and, you know, I know they'll do anything for me, so, yeah, they, they mean the world to me. You have fun, Paloma? You have fun, Nori? Yes! That's a wrap here. From the fam and everybody. Yo fam, Overtime refuses to miss this year. The drops are nonstop, and we're just getting started. Get like me and cop all the fits. All you gotta do is click the link below and make sure you stay looking out for all our drops.